Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on The Father Show, and I'm your host, Mike Thompson. Today, we have another great show, but before we get to that part, I want to ask you, if you have not subscribed to The Father Show with Mike Thompson, please go to our website, and you can find us there. You can find resources and things of that nature, but... If you want to subscribe to our show, go to our YouTube channel, hit that subscription button, and there you will find uh, our subscription and other shows that we've done. And even our guest that's coming on here today, she has another show on our channel as well. So I'm lucky and blessed to be able to uh, welcome her back to the show. Now, for those men that are looking for resources Please go to the Father Show with MikeThompson.com, click on resources, and there you will find resources that can help you in the subject matter that we're talking about today and other subjects that we have covered in the past. So we have a great amount of resources there for you. And if you're ever in a position where you don't know where to find something or you can't find anything please let us know you can hit us up on our facebook page and you can also contact me at the father show at gmail.com and we'll see what we can do about finding that information for you so ladies and gentlemen our show today is going to be with a young lady that has a relation she's a relationship healer and a certified step family coach now judy graybill works with men women and couples who repeatedly argue can agree on a solution and long to feel the connection again she's gifted at identifying where they get stuck and helps them create a strategy to transform conflict into connection and partnership now, Judy learned how to navigate challenging situations the hard way and eventually healed. And after a long time pattern of dysfunctional relationships originated from her family of origin, it accumulated in a painful breakup from her dysfunctional family, which left her heartbroken, resentful, and confused. Her one wish was to be happy again and setting her on a healing path. From that, she was born, well, excuse me, from that was born her passion to help couples experience a deep loving connection instead of being dysfunctional or a painful breakup. With formal degrees in sociology and psychology and certification as a step family coach, she formed her company, Sensible Steps, in June of 2008. In addition to coaching, she's a speaker, educator, and a consultant. Now, she's been a featured expert, not just on this show, but also on other podcasts, internet radio shows, telus summits, and she facilitates in-person workshops on divorce, co-parenting, and remarriage. Now, she has been quoted in Peter articles and has published two free eBooks available on her website, which we'll have that information listed below in our comments. And you can find her on Instagram, YouTube, blog, talk radio, and her website, which is www.judygraybill.com. So ladies and gentlemen, let's stay tuned. You're going to find out more about Judy and she's going to tell you more about how you can get in touch with her when we get closer to the end of the show. But before, now, let's just get into it and let's welcome Judy Graybill to the show. Judy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm glad to have you back. I like that smile, so I'd love having you back and seeing you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Likewise. So, we're going to be talking about today um, block intimacy. And, you know, Intimacy is something that us men, we have a hard time doing. I know it's because of being, I think it makes us a little bit vulnerable. And, you know, we know as men, we really don't like to feel vulnerable. 
but I know it's something that we have to do and it's something that we need to do, especially when you're in a relationship. So let's start with how do you define intimacy? Uh, yeah, that's a great place to start. And I, I, I actually want to start by re referencing an interview you did uh, just not too long ago with Randall Turner, because mm -hmm. uh, he, that was all about having lifetime intimacy. And I want to say that I really do love his definition. Um, yeah. So and it was multifaceted. So I, I do want to remind your listeners to go there first, because everything that we talk about is kind of a supplement and it complements everything he says. Okay. So um, I'm just giving the female perspective as well as the relationship coach who's worked with couples, including men. Yeah. So, but now my personal use term uh, intimacy long before I listened to your uh, show with him. And so what, how I defined it is more in broader terms mm -hmm. and, um, I see it more as something that's deeply personal and unique for every relationship dynamic. It's more of the, I get you energy with somebody. Whereas okay. like, you know, somebody, all of that person, you see the real person, you, them intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, you like, I get you, mm -hmm. you know, like in, in the movie avatar, they would greet people. I don't have you, do you remember that movie? It was I animated, saw it, but it's the, been so long people. since I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. Well, they would greet people by saying, I see you. Okay. And what they meant was not like, I see you with my eyes, but like, mm -hmm. I see you internally. I see all of you. To me, that's closer to what intimacy is. Um, and the other thing I will say about it is also something that Randall Turner said is that it's not something you do. It's about how you're being. Mm, and yeah. everything that we talk about today is really about how you're being in the relationship. It's not about something you do. So, um, yeah, because intimacy and I, re yeah, I definitely would love what Randy had to say in that show. And I, I'm like you, I invite the guests. If you haven't seen it, definitely go back and watch it. But, you know, it's, is something that we have to be. I mean, it's not about necessarily just cooking dinner or with candle lights and a, and a bottle of wine and things like that. It's a more inner, getting to know the inner person. And I think that's what you're saying as well. Right. It's like, are you being present when you're doing those things? Mm -hmm. Like, are, are you doing those things? Um, with the understanding of what, uh, how it's helping her, not mm -hmm. like what is the end goal, but it is like, how am I do being while I'm doing it? You yeah. know, it's the process. It's not the, it's not the destination. It's the journey, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. Cause I know it is not about, like you said, the end goal. And a lot of times in our male thinking is about, the final goal, which is having sex and, and making love and things of that nature. So, but a true intimacy relationship is not about that. And what we as men have to learn is to how to be really true to our partner and, and her being true to us as well. Because, you know, we know not just men have problems with being intimate. We have women that have problems being intimate. They don't know how yes. to do it as well. That, oh, that's absolutely true. And so um, I want to say, like, with regard to what you just said, it's about the connection. Because you, it, it's, I, and I really want to um, plant this seed with regard to intimacy. Think of it in terms of the connection you're having with that person. Mm -hmm. how you're sharing that energy you're sharing everything you're you're not just sharing words you're not just sharing one aspect of it it's like every aspect of that uh every single step of the way you're sharing something of yourself with the other person mm -hmm. now let me ask you how would 
because a lot of times, you know, being intimate for a man is open up his vulnerability. How can we get the wives and women to understand you say one way that you want the man to be more intimate, more open, more vulnerable, but at the same time, you judge him when they do that and not in a positive way. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love these questions. These are so challenging. No, um, no, it's actually true and it's unfortunate. So and and that judgment and that fear of judgment and that fear of criticism is actually what shuts them down mm -hmm. and and that's and it makes them more vulnerable and not want to speak up. So um, one of the things I would suggest is it's not so much a suggestion is just another way to go about it when you're feeling that vulnerability and you're like, you know, like if I say something, I'm opening myself up to her criticizing. So instead of, you don't necessarily have to initiate conversations. Mm -hmm. You could ask her questions and just listen. So like you could get her talking, you know, because mm -hmm. um, asking questions is a great way to when you're feeling vulnerable and you don't want to open yourself up, if you ask questions, you're still sharing space. You're still sharing that moment and you're giving your wife an opportunity to share parts of herself and you can just listen to her mm -hmm. and understand her. So, um, and, and also people reveal themselves. Um, if, if you listen and you pay attention, people tell you, who they are and what they want. So sometimes um, with regard to something that she might be criticizing you on, um, it's ask, if you ask the right question, you can listen underneath what she's saying to like, what is she really bothered by? It's a, it's a kind of, if it's, if there's a lot of criticism, they might want some one-on-one -on -one help with that. I mean, mm -hmm. because I get that, you know, sometimes it's really hard to really understand what somebody's really trying to say, mm -hmm. but in general, it's, I would just suggest asking more questions, getting curious and, and listening. And that's where you will come in too. So, I mean, people could contact you and, and talk to you and so they can talk through these issues. Yes. Now, is there anything in particular that you could say a man that can that's struggling to get that connection Is anything that he can open up asking so he can kind of find out what she is looking for? Uh, yeah, I mean, like maybe just is she stressed about something is is I mean, like Okay, sometimes before you ask the questions, think about what's going on in her life right now. Is, is her life full of responsibilities and things that she's stressed about, work, the kids, uh, home life? So a lot of those things will stress out a woman. And so sometimes it's not so much about you. And I, I know that's that's, very much, I think a lot of your um, audience needs to hear. It's not about you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes she's just in her own thoughts and stressed out about something that's going on in her life right now. Um, so I, I would say, look at those things first and and before you ask the question. So then maybe you could direct the questions. Is something going on in this area? Is there something you're wanting help with? Is there, is there a way that I could help you? Is there a way that I can support you? And also, because I, I hear you when you say that, you know, we should ask the question, but for men, a lot of times, if you give us an answer, we want to help solve the problem. And oh, yeah, that's in my notes. You, yeah. <laughs> we don't want you to solve our problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, so think it. So 
also that's a that's a really good point because if if a woman is asking for your help with something mm -hmm. help does not mean fix it for me or do it for me it means i want your i want to consult you i want to consult you just give me your knowledge just give me a couple tips just give tell me one thing maybe two things and then let me finish it okay just answer my question and then let me finish it <laughs> judy that's too don't much don't do it for that's, me that's too hard <laughs> It is sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know. And, and I know it's just part of our nature that we want to fix it. You know, you said, oh, maybe I'm having a problem at work. And we, wow, you want me to go down there? I, I can go down there and I can <laughs> I fix it for you. I talk to your boss. And we know we can't do that. But, you know, that's our initial response is let's go in and let's fix it. Uh, and, and maybe that's because... And correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe that's because that men, we are not a really conversationist anyway. We, you know, we want to hear the problem, fix it, move on. So yeah. is that what you would say to be the problem as well? Um, yes. Um, yeah. I mean, and because it's not about instruction per se, it's, it's easier to just do it. That's, mm -hmm. that's the easiest thing. So that would be, that's the natural tendency. And of course, there's a lot of women that are the same way. So I, I want to uh, just throw out a word to, to help um, your audience sink in a little bit. Empowerment. Okay. Think empowerment. It's not about fixing the things. It's about empowering her with knowledge, empowering okay. her with information to fix it. And sometimes that could be just one or two things, and then that's it. it I mean, it, as far as not being conversational goes, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need to be. You could just say one one thing, was that helpful, yes or no, you know, yeah. and then you get her feedback. Was that helpful, yeah. yes or no, and she'll answer you. Yeah, so Hopefully you say like, yes. <laughs> okay, well, try this and see if that works and then just leave it alone. Yes. Okay. And and I would suggest ask, is is that, was that helpful? Because okay. it, it, it's hard to know exactly what somebody wants because that's also an individual type of thing. Mm -hmm. And and not all women are the, the same. So, you know, that's going to vary her relationship a little yeah, bit absolutely absolutely yeah. now you mentioned uh to me earlier that there were three blocks to intimacy what are those three blocks yeah so the biggest one is unresolved relationship issues mm. um and a lot of people don't recognize that those those are going to get in the way because we hold hidden resentments that we don't share with our partners i mean and you mentioned the whole vulnerability thing and not wanting to open up and being criticized um all of that is causing some inner resentment even mm -hmm. within your audience i mean and it could be within her too i mean she might have some resentments that she's not sharing with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, because that's that's also the nature of relationships because it's it's very difficult, those uncomfortable conversations. You know, nobody likes to have them. Nobody wants to open themselves up. So um, that's, and there's so many possibilities for what those relationship issues are. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's not like I can go into like all the specifics, but the resentments um, are 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 big, you know, okay. whatever those criticizing things are. Like, for example, if um, a common thing that comes up is people say they're going to do one thing and then do another. That could be you or it could be your partner, mm -hmm. either one that's going to cause uh, relationship issues. So you're either going to resent that person for not doing it, or it's going to violate your trust, 
the trust you have in mm-hmm. that person. Mm-hmm. So those trust issues, resentment issues, that's the biggest killer of intimacy and the biggest block. Um, so I want to say you have to really um, get comfortable with those uncomfortable emotions. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but if we can get comfortable with our own uh, uncomfortable emotions, then we can get uncomfortable with our partner's uncomfortable emotions. And, and that builds a kind of resilience t- in order to be able to talk about them and open ourselves up. So that's the first block. The second one is just not, is, is actually related because it's not listening or communicating. Okay. Um, but, and I, and I start with listening because a lot of times when people say communication, they think talking. Mm-hmm. And in the way I see it, communication is two way. We're really good at, or not good at sharing our, what we want or what we want to happen or what we think the solution is. But most people are not good at listening to what the other person wants. Mm. And so, um, because we all feel like our solution is the best. <laughs> so, so, so if you just do, if you just, if we just, whatever the problem is, if you just do it the way I want, we don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> if that's true. <laughs> right. But that's not how it actually works. So really what you have to do is listen to what the other person wants and why they are not doing it your way. But what if they can't? really verbalize that exactly what they want yeah that's actually a problem you have to talk it out you have to ask more questions Mm -hmm. so i mean it really becomes its own challenge just to understand your partner but again if if you're in that space of wanting to understand Mm -hmm. then you're going to make progress even if it's not in one day or one hour, if you're, it could be an ongoing conversation about a challenge that you have over a few days, or maybe it's a few weeks because it's that big of a challenge. But again, if you're coming at it with the intention, understanding your partner, and, and also, don't see it as me and my partner against each other. I mean, mm-hmm. because it, it, it feels that way at times, right? Because it's like, it's my solution against her solution. We're not agreeing on solution. So therefore it must be me against her. But what you could do is shift the way you think about it in terms of me and my partner is working together against this problem. Mm-hmm. So the, this, the problem is separate from us. It's not like me, my idea against her idea, or, you know, it is her and I working together yeah. to figure out how to solve a problem. So like, it's just that shift in how you, when you see it in that different way, then the conversation is more conversational and it's more open-minded as opposed to just battling it out. But you you have to you mentioned you have to be open minded because you have to be open to suggestions and, you know, trying the other person. And it might be a mixture of what you both are talking about that's going to solve the issue. But yeah. if you are married to a person that is always feel like they got to be right or have the last word, uh, that's going to be a little hard to do. Yeah, um, those those are the most challenging. Um, so um, you have to get really creative in those. And if, if you're in a relationship with somebody who is that kind of a very strong personality and always has to be right, mm-hmm. um, I I want to say that you almost you almost want to get like extra help 
on yeah. on one on one because I just in, in my in my coaching it's like you you can't you can lead a you know the saying you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink you know mm -hmm. if that person is not willing to budge it doesn't matter what you say you know so you really have to then sometimes step back and instead of trying to solve that problem sometimes you have to um it, it's a balance maybe you let that person have it their way in that situation but redirect to other areas where you do have influence and control in the household yeah because um, it just oh i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead well it just made me think of a person that i run into every now and then and he's he kind of tells me what him and his wife go through and he'll say well baby this is what's going to happen and this this and that and here outline it and tell her exactly what's going to happen with that problem and she'll be like uh -uh, no no I'm, I'm gonna do it my way and then it ends up happening exactly like he said it would and but he's constantly doing it over and over and over again to the point you know he's like look I, I'm not gonna even tell you anything because you're not gonna listen to me anyway and that just brings you know builds a riff in their marriage and you know what we're talking about that can block your intimacy in your marriage yes yes that is a block to their intimacy um so one thing i would suggest i mean it's not so much a suggestion it's really kind of understanding that just the, sometimes it's acceptance you know like <laughs> I, I, so i see some couples that are very toxic and so i distinguish dysfunctional and toxicity dysfunctional i believe is fixable toxicity is not hmm. so like with your friend um i don't know them personally but i would uh, it could be either if she's genuinely if it's if it's in other areas it's a loving relationship then I would say it's just a matter of just accepting her for who she is mm -hmm. and her desire to, you know, solve her own problems her way. Um, but if that's the way it is for every single area of the relationship, then I would want to look at where, where do you show up in that relationship? How are you showing up as yourself? Because mm -hmm. that kind of leads me to the third block to intimacy is the lack of authenticity. Mm. Uh, are, are you able to be yourself in your relationship? Because some, if, if our partner is not accepting us for who we are, how we are, and all of our challenges, because you mentioned the, the criticizing and, and sometimes it's, it's condescension, that's a lack of acceptance. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then um, I see people trying to bend who they are or not show up fully. I'm, I'm not going to tell her that because she's just going to make fun of it anyway, or she's not going to do it. So uh, there's a lot of those ways in which people are not showing up truly who they are. And um, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. You... I, it, well, that's just basically it, because um, I was probably just going to repeat myself, I, because it's you want to figure out how you want to be in a relationship and how mm -hmm. important that is to you. So it's really reevaluating um, what your values are within that relationship and how you value to be seen and and is this in all areas of the relationship or just mm -hmm. one yeah one of the things that i always think about is you know when i hear things like being able to have those tough conversations but a lot of times we're talking about that after they get married which to me is too late you know you should be having these conversations and I know that's a hard one, but you need to start having these conversations before you get married because you really need to know who you're marrying. And if you're not being your authentic self, 
then you're not showing your partner who they are marrying. Exactly. Yeah, that is a huge problem because um, I see that a lot. Um, but the other thing that I want to say to that is that a lot of people don't think about is that you cannot predict what's going to happen a year down the road. Mm -hmm. So you don't really, you, you cannot always know what tough conversations are going to need to be had after the honeymoon phase is over. And, and because I deal with remarriages, I have to say, re, if you're in a remarriage, you don't really have a honeymoon phase. Um, that's one of the challenges also. But you think you're having those conversations up front. And in actuality, when the marriage happens, a year down the road, six months down the road, it could be five years down the road, something comes up that you just didn't know was going to happen. And sometimes you think that you had the conversation. We talked about this, baby. We talked about it. Remember you said X, Y, Z. I said A, B, C. We talked about it. This is mm -hmm. the way it is. And then your partner will be like, yes, but this is extenuating circumstances. This is a little bit different because of such and such. Or it's different because of this other thing. So that's... So those are the two things that I want to say with regard to that. Yeah, because you, you know, one thing I think couples need to realize, too, is that, you know, you're always changing. You're always evolving. And the knowledge you pick up, whether it's watching this show, talking to you or your co-workers or your pastor or whomever, your family members, you are changing from the knowledge that you already know and what you're getting. So whoever you married, you know, a year ago is not probably is not going to be the same person. Uh, two, three, four uh, on up. There's going to be some changes. Yes. So, I mean, we do. We evaluate based off of new information, new mm -hmm. experiences, new jobs, um, if you're if you move people who move or have kids or the kids have you know grown up and moved out mm -hmm. all of those things will trigger new experiences new feelings and so new feelings new thoughts new ways of looking at things naturally come up i mean we we watch the news the the, the current events affects us mm -hmm. we read books and our, so our our perspectives are changing so yeah, I mean, um, we have to sometimes reevaluate. And when you, and when you say remarriage, is that a reason why some people get divorced and then remarry? Is that what you mean by the, you know, remarriage? So, so the remarriage that I'm re I'm referring to people who uh, get divorced because it was not working out for whatever reason it could be dysfunctional or it just irreconcilable differences and then they marry somebody else who okay. they think okay I, I figured it out i got it right now i found the right one um she's my soulmate you know my my honey so uh <laughs> but uh they bring sometimes they have kids from other previous relationships yeah. so yeah. that adds a whole new dynamic. Yeah. Um, yes, it can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have that experience. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's it's being a step parent is is a different dynamics and and their ages make a difference. My wife and I, we as you know, we blended, you know, three kids each and th thankful they were old enough, open-minded enough that they will, uh, they accepted us and our family gets along very well. And, you know, my, her oldest son, which I called my son too, uh, he said, you know, Mike, if something happened to you, I, I just couldn't happen and something happens to you. And that just touched my heart like no other. Cause the first time he met me, he said, I'm not calling him daddy. <laughs> my wife said, you have a dad. No, you don't. You don't call him daddy. But we have grown to love each other 
uh, as you know, he is my, I don't even say stepson, I say my son. And we have grown to love each other as such. And it's great. And it is hard. And stepkids can really mess up a relationship. You know, I have a, as you yeah. know, a good friend of mine, Tommy Maloney, with the Step Family uh, podcast. You know, we talk about it, and that's actually how we met. And it really is something that, you know, you have to deal with. And then and this is another dynamic that you have in a relationship that you see in you and talking to the other people yeah. could really help. And, and remarriages with children, those divorce at a much higher rate than first marriages. Yeah. Uh, depending on how the statistics, I've seen the different statistics. So I've seen it as um, like in the 60, 64%, all the way up to 75%. I think, I think that also how they de define it and how many years in. Mm -hmm. So um, the first, uh, most of them, let's see, I think it's like 35% don't last or break up between uh, between two to five years. Mm. That's 35% break up between two to five years. And then it's uh, closer to 60% when you get to, oh, I want to say five or seven years. I'm, but it the thing is, um, if you uh, factor in the cohabitation rates, mm -hmm. it, the, the percentage is much higher. So that's why it's not exactly known what what those divorce rates, yeah. re-divorce rates are. And what I've learned is that it's not so much the step family dynamics that causes the re-divorce, mm -hmm. it's the relationship issues. So like, cause you named, you said a lot of key things uh, about how your family has blended. You know, like for example, you, your stepson initially said, you know, I'm not going to call you daddy. And your wife said, well, you don't have to because you have a dad. Mm -hmm. So that that is a value and an understanding that you have, that she has, that because of her closure from that first relationship and how she approached that, that helped your child or I mean her child, you know, mm -hmm. um, your stepson adjust to your mm -hmm. step family. So that's not the case in every, not right. everybody feels that way. So it's not so much that it's the stepkids that mess up the remarriage. It is not really understanding what those underlying uh, emotions are because, mm. because there's a lot of unresolved pain from that loss of that first family. And if you're, and there's a lot of incomplete grief based on the loss of that first family. And that's exactly what your stepson was saying when he's mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to call you daddy. That was a sign of incomplete grief. And his mom mm. understood that. She didn't understand all the specifics. You know what I mean? You don't yeah. have to understand the psychology, yeah. but you can just recognize I'm validating my kid's feelings and it's okay and, and overcome it. So, but a lot and of I people are not, not everybody is that self-aware. And I think you, you know, you mentioned that. And I think it's important that when you, she validated this feeling, but as a man coming into that relationship, we have to validate their feelings as well. We have to understand the pain. And as you mentioned, the, uh, they haven't gotten over the grief or they haven't adjusted to the new family um so you have to kind of take it with a little kid glove and work your way in and not just you know because some men uh you know they're going there it's my way this is my house you got to do it this way and you can't do that you know uh, that causes the most problem that's the yeah. authoritarian parent parent style yeah. and the authoritarian parenting style especially when the biological parent has the permissive parenting style, mm -hmm. those don't work. Like if, if a parent is completely um, hands off, do rules, they don't do consequences, and they marry somebody who is all, like you just said, it's my way or the highway, and this is how it's going to be, and this is what you're doing wrong, and this is how mm -hmm. you're, we're going to punish. That dynamic is the, is the hardest. 
that causes the most conflict in, and, in remarriages. And when you're talking about these conflicts, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about, block intimacy. Because when you're having all those conflicts, you're going to have a one heck of a time trying to really not just have the physical intimacy, but also have the emotional and really getting to know that person. Yes. I don't know what that, to add to that. That was perfect. Exactly. One hundred percent. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. I mean, it's like how because one of the things in remarriages is like because, um, for example, uh, people the step parent is going to tell the biological parent how they should raise their kid. That's not mm -hmm. exactly what they're trying saying, but it, it is. It just depends on how it's worded. But regardless of how it's worded, that's how it's received. You're telling me how to raise my kid? No, no. <laughs> and they get defensive. And they also think that their partner is insulting their kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Yeah. And I, I can't stress this enough. And, and it comes up in, in my coaching, obviously, with, with couples. They don't want to say it. They no, nobody wants to admit that they think their partner doesn't like their kids, mm -hmm. but that, but that's a reality. That's, mm -hmm. that's how a lot of parents feel. They think mm -hmm. that my partner does not like my, my son or my daughter. Yeah. And how can you be intimate with somebody who doesn't like your kids? You, you, you can't. Not truly. No. Right. Right. You can fake it. You can fake it. That's, a, that's, that's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, truly, no, you would never really have a good relationship in a, a real intimate, true intimate relationship. And that's what we're striving for. And that's what we're talking about today is having that true intimacy and getting over those blocks. And it's, I know it's hard to put all that together because you got so many balls moving at one time and you're trying to, okay, figure this out and figure that out and balance this and balance that. You know, you got a new family you got, and you know, one thing I think is, is funny and not in a ha ha way, but as we know, as parents, every child is different. So even your own child, is going to be different so when you're trying to learn a child that you have never you haven't been with since birth uh you know you that's another thing that's hard to do yeah um i like what you just said because you said when you're trying to learn that new kid that's that's that was a very key important thing and i think that's why your blending situation you know, happened. I mean, there's a few bumps, but for the most part, mm -hmm. you know, you guys did a good job. Mm -hmm. um, because, but a lot of times people don't, it's not an attitude of trying to learn the new kid. It's like, I know how to be a parent. I know what kids need. And this is what kids need. All mm -hmm. kids need this. Mm -hmm. And so there's more, and it's subtle because they're not aware that they're making an assumption that a kid is going to want this or be this or do that yeah so because like you said you know you, each kid is different and like uh i don't have kids of my own but even like with my two nieces for example in the same mm -hmm. i mean they're both worlds apart you know one is always pushing the envelope no matter what, if you tell her not to do something, she immediately does the exact thing you told her not to do. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so, so you have to learn to not tell her what to do. You have to, you want to give her choices because mm -hmm. that's, that's what works for her. Now, my other niece, on the other hand, you tell her once and that's it. Mm. You never have to tell her again. And then if you accidentally do it yourself, she'll tell you <laughs> and judy didn't you say you were supposed to do this I was that. she'd throw it back up at you huh? right yeah so you know like you said everyone's different and you have to learn 
Yeah. But Judy, unfortunately, that's our time for today. I always enjoy talking with you and I learn so much. And I thank you so much for bringing, you know, blocking how we can unblock our intimacy and, you know, learn to open up, learn to talk, learn to communicate. And those three steps, you know, resentment, I definitely know that one. And, you know, not listening. And we all know communication is important in any relationship and the lack of authenticity, you know, being authentic. And I think a lot of people, because I used to say it when I was younger, that, you know, not, don't get mad at me. But I would say, you know, when you get married, as soon as after you say, and I do, a woman just flips and she turns into a different person altogether. Oh. <laughs> um, I, you know, but uh, it's funny because women say that about men, too. So but um, the thing is, is like I, I always say the expectations, the expectations change right yeah. when we get married yeah and um we we have to be honest with ourselves first and foremost about what our expectations are um and speaking of the authenticity it's like um i would say for those men who feel that way think about how you're not being authentic too because mm -hmm. it's it's a two-way street right mm -hmm. i mean yes and the, the woman does flip but so does the man and because our expectations change mm -hmm. because we're married or because we moved in together suddenly we're expecting them to to do all these extra things mm -hmm. that, they, that they've never agreed to do that they mm -hmm. never thought you were going to want them to do so that's yeah that that's the flip that you're talking about it's the expectations yeah so yeah I don't know you women were saying the same thing about us. Us? We're innocent. I don't know what I you're know. talking about. Right? <laughs> well, Judy, I want you to tell the audience how they can get in touch with you because, you know, even the women that are watching the show and the couples and the men that really want to learn to how to really be intimate in their relationship and how to let their partner be intimate in their relationship. How can they get in touch with you? Okay, well, thank you. Um, my website is judygraybill.com, J-U-D-Y-G-R-A-Y-B-I-L-L.com. I'm on Instagram at judy.m.graybill. Um, I'm also on Blog Talk Radio now. I just started a new show. It's a short segment called Real Talk About Real Relationships. Um, so look me up. I'm also on Facebook. Also, Judy M. Graybill. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be doing more podcasts like this. Yeah, but I'd love to have you back because, you know, we can talk about relationships. And because really this block uh, intimacy really coincides with how you're going to have a good relationship. And how... You know, one of the things I always want to discuss is how can we get more people to have these conversations before they get married so that we don't have this 50, you know, 50 percent of the marriages getting divorced. You know, right, exactly. And you have to have be get comfortable having those conversations is probably even more important. So because like what we were saying earlier, as far as being able to predict what kind of situation you're going to have mm -hmm. in a year from now you can't but if you get comfortable having those conversations mm -hmm. then whatever comes up you're going to be able to navigate through it so yeah. that is important to start having those again get comfortable with those uncomfortable uh emotions yours yeah. or your partner's yeah, we're right. going we to keep working on that. <laughs> right. We're all a work in progress. And we are. We really are. And, you know, one of the things I say on this show that, you know, knowledge is power. And every day we should be striving to be better than we were yesterday. And you only can do that with being knowledgeable, being open minded and, you know, putting that stuff that you learn into practice. Yes, 100 percent. 
And um, I, I, and I like how you uh, also were talking to women who watch your show too, because I think that that is also important. It's one way that we can understand our partners is by mm -hmm. watching watching shows like this. I mean, mm -hmm. because even though your audience is primarily you're helping men, mm -hmm. but for women who ch tune in, it helps them understand their partner and it also helps them understand themselves either also because mm -hmm. it's how we react to them, right? Because we see them in a, in a certain way, so we're reacting to that. And then if we start to see them in a different way, we can react differently to them mm -hmm. and it, it changes the whole dynamic of the yeah. relationship. Yeah. So this show is important, I think, for both men and women. Yeah, well, thank in you. In my opinion. I yeah, and, and really, I do, too. I know it's a, like you said, you said it perfectly. This is basically for men, but I'd love having women to watch because that way you can know what your man is going through. And if you have a son, then you know what he can go through and what you can teach him so that he can have a better relationship with his woman. So it helps everybody. Yes, yes, I, I completely agree. So, um, 100%. All right. Well, Judy, thank you. thank you so much for being on the show once again. And I really appreciate it. And I love the message that you bring and how you deliver it. So, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for today. And I really do love having Judy Gray Beal on the show. And I love the information that she brought. And I hope that it benefited you. I know it did me. I always learn something from every show that I do. And at least I try to. And I'm not saying I always implement what I learn. But I do try to do better every single day and be better than I was yesterday. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have not subscribed to our show, please go to The Father Show with Mike Thompson, our YouTube page, hit that subscription button, and while you're there, hit that notification bell. And really, tell somebody else about the show so they can tune in and hopefully get something, some extra knowledge as well, that their relationship and their life can be better. And for those men that need resources, Please go to the Father Show with Mike Thompson dot com. Click on resources and there you can find resources that can help you. Judy's information is on our website as well. But you have all her information down below in the um, comments. So you can always find it there. And if not, like I said, go to our website and you can check it out there. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for being here and enjoying our show today. And I pray that you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next week.